Hello everyone, welcome back. This is OmniTalk Retail coming to you live from the Fusion Group booth here at the Consumer Goods Forum in Amsterdam. I'm Anne Mazenga. And I'm Chris Walton. And standing between us, we have Cecile Bilot-Zin, the Chief Executive Officer of the Bell Group. Cecile, welcome. Thank you. Oh, we're so excited <laughs> to have you. Yes, I know. I said I say before we got started, I'm very excited for this interview because I love your products. But for maybe for those of us, for those of our watchers back home that are maybe unfamiliar with Bell, can you explain to them what it is and what it is that you do? Yeah, for sure. So we are a family-owned company, pretty old, 169 years old. Wow. And um, I believe that most of the brand we have, you will know them because it's Baby Bell, Baby Bell, The Laughing Co, Go Go Squeeze or Pump Pot or Kiri. So they are pretty global, I would say. Yes. And we are used to describe what we do like we sell portions of goodness. Mm -hmm. So oh. goodness coming from dairy, goodness coming from fruit or veggie <laughs> and plant based. But this is our trademark, I would say. Okay, so portions. That's, yeah, that's, that's kind really of the mission that yeah, you absolutely. subscribe we, to. Yeah, but absolutely. a little treat. Like it, I, I mean, the, the baby bells I remember, I mean, it was always like this little bit of luxury that we got to have, especially <laughs> in the U.S. market. We don't yeah. we don't get to have those little moments of <laughs> treats. Um, I can I ask you about the goodness part, too? Is the, is the, yeah, goodness, sure. is the goodness open ended for a, a strategic reason, too? Like, it seems like it may be. No, I think since the very beginning, you know, at the very beginning, we are a cheese maker. Okay. Cheese is just milk and ferment. Yeah. And it's a very traditional know how. But if you look at the DNA of the company, which is the Laughing Co, because Laughing Co is a brand which is 104 years old already. Oh, wow. So it's on one side the cheese know how, so goodness coming from milk and dairy. And on the other side, another know how, which is micro mechanics. Okay. Because we have invented the portion. It was 104 years ago. Can you imagine that? So, and in fact, we have machine, proprietary machine that are capable to produce at high speed, high velocity, this little portion. So, for instance, Baby yeah. Bell that you love. Yeah. yeah. You will not find any copy, any private label on Baby Bell because we are the only one. It seems easy. It's not. <laughs> we are able to <laughs> produce yeah, probably Baby not. Bell cheese yeah. with the wax, and uh, and yes. that's where the true experience yes. come from because it's so playful you open it and after yeah, you right. play with yeah. the red wax yeah. it's really a full experience but we stick to one mission which is the product that we sell come from real wholesome ingredients mm -hmm. either milk either fruit either veg very minimally processed right. and i think that's the beauty of what we offer healthy sustainable and fun well you have quite the CPG background. Um, tell us a little bit about that and then how you became CEO. Oh, okay. So, uh, in fact, I've always the, I've always been passionate about food. Yeah. When you look at uh, when I was young, I was passionate about um, social human sciences, if I may. Okay. And um, because I was passionate about that, I've started in the marketing in food because food is every day. Mm -hmm. Food is cultural. S food is social relationship between people. Yes. Food is health of the people. Mm -hmm. Food is health of the planet. So for all these reasons, I think it's super meaningful to work in this industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've done most of my career at Danone, where it was already mm. a very purposeful company, yes. 17 years at Danone. And uh, where at the very beginning of Danone, you have what they call the dual project, social and mm -hmm. economical project. Mm. And the reason why I've joined Bell is because first it's a mission-led company. Mm -hmm. So it means that by status, by law, it's embedded into who we are. We commit to pilot the company on two legs equally important, performance mm -hmm. and sustainability, mm -hmm. but two legs equally important. And this is a family-owned company. So that's the reason why when I have conversation with my shareholders, the only question that they are asking me, are you sure that this is the right decision for the next generation okay because you know when you are companies they are the fifth generation they want to pass the baton to the sixth yes. generation that's their only purpose right so there is a different way to run the business Absolutely. when you are with that kind of very long-term view on things yeah. that's a good question for every board to be asking mm -hmm. i think um all right so what brings you to cgf have you been here before i'm assuming you have yeah yeah um, uh, uh, first of all you know i i I believe that CGF is an exceptional organization and for a very uh, simple reason. I think this is the only uh, moment like the forum and the only place where you have together 
manufacturers and retailers mm -hmm. working together on how do we transform the food chain into a sustainable, more healthy one mm -hmm. and more inclusive one. And I believe it's a necessity because food is not a business like any other. Yes. And I think it's very important to say it and say it again. It cannot be a business like any others because food is a human right. Right. Mm -hmm. As simple as that. Right. And there are so many things, so many critical things that are embedded in the food uh, uh, from farm to fork, as I was telling you. The well being of the farmers of the world, without farmers, we do not feed anyone. You have within the food value chain the health of the people. Relationship between food and health is not to be proven anymore. We are right. very clear about that. Right. But they are the health of the planet. Right. Mm -hmm. So food is related to water we consume on Earth. Seventy percent of the water used on Earth is used all along the food value chain right. and mainly through agricultural, you know, upstream. And we all know that we're gonna have major water scarcity all over the world. Right. So it has to start with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some of those challenges uh, are, are, you know, industry-wide. So the retail, the CPG industry that are here at Consumer Goods Forum to work towards solutions to those. What are some of the challenges that you see ahead for your organization specifically mm -hmm. as we look to the next couple of years? Um, I think that uh, one of the biggest challenges that we have is we need to work across the value chain. Okay. So right. if I do not have collaboration, partnerships with retailers, mm -hmm. I cannot move the system by my own. Right. I, can I, give, I can give you an example. We work on regenerative agricultural practices. We sell pom pot or go-go squeeze in the US. It's a little pot in which you have apple sauce, fruit puree. Yes. So it's a perfect snack for the kids. It's only fruits. And for adults. Mm -hmm. And for adults too. Some exactly. adults might, yeah. might yeah. consume yeah. a go-go yeah. squeeze absolutely, one time absolutely. or two in a pinch. Go-go squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And, and if I want to move towards regenerative agriculture, all the orchard, uh, for instance, in the US, yeah. apple orchard, yeah. I, I used, because you know it's interesting, mm. we use the apple that are not sold in retailers because they are too small or they doesn't look good they're yeah. absolutely great yeah. but consumer you know when they buy an apple they want a nice one yeah so you have 20 percent of the crops that we use to do the apple sauce so if i want to m to work with the farmers as i only represent 20 percent of their crops i need to have a partnership with the retailers right because they're gonna use right. 80 percent of their crops so we need to go together and, and tell them we're ready to pay more because the reality is that we have to pay more. We're ready to, ma to pay more if you move towards regenerative practices. Mm. Yeah, right. Makes sense. That's really interesting. I've never thought about the collaboration part of it in the way you're describing, too. The other aspect that we talk a lot about on our show is technology. I'm curious, too, how has technology changed the way you do your job, particularly over the last three to five years, and in particular with the rise of AI, too? Has that changed things for you? Yeah, I think uh, data and tech is a massive opportunity for us. I think today, you know, we are at a pivotal moment. Data and tech could do the worst mm -hmm. to the world as it can do the best. So there is a real question for us, which is how do we make sure that we use the power of artificial intelligence and data and tech to do good? Right. And when I look at the opportunity we have in front of us, I was mentioning, you know, efficiency in the supply chain. One third of the food which is produced today is wasted. Right. Yeah, we wasted because, uh, first of all, consumers at mm -hmm. home are not always super aware of the value of food, but because there is a lot of efficiency in the supply chain. Another topic which is absolutely massive, we have uh, to support consumers to move towards healthier diet. Mm -hmm. And the only way to help them is to start with where they are, their preferences, and help them to do what I call the five degree shift every day. Through artificial intelligence, retailers will be capable to tomorrow and with Gen AI to have kind of a shopper assistant yep. that will tell them, you know, based on your basket, I see that you love this, I see that you love lasagna, mm -hmm. you buy, you know, have you ever tried veggie la lasagna? Yes. And you know, and you provide the recipe and you propose to buy the ingredients so that you can, so 
that's a kind of shift, you know, to help them to right. move to put more veggie in your plate, put more fruit in your plate, food from, uh, you know, more protein. Protein coming from there is right. a fantastic protein in terms right. of nutrition, but also in terms of our environment because you have much less carbon in a dairy protein than in a meat protein. Right. So, and I think with an artificial intelligence, you know, uh, shopper assistant, we can we can really make a big difference in 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 the way feel that people feed themselves. So, meaning in the health of the population. That's incredibly exciting, I think, for consumers, for retailers, for CPG companies. Um, what else are you excited about, Cecile, <laughs> for the year ahead? Your and um, you know, uh, at Bell, at the vision, we want to be the most sustainable and the most innovative company. Okay. On sustainability, we've been used to pioneer this for a very long time. On the innovation, I believe that, again, data and tech will be a massive lever uh, on innovation side. And I'm going to give you an example. We okay. have a global partnership with a company named Dassault System. They are with their uh, Biova, Biovia brand. Uh, and Biovia is the ones who have invented virtual twins to develop, okay. for instance, new drugs in the pharma industry. Okay. Oh, okay. So if you look at the way the food industry today right. innovates, and it's not only at Bell, it's everywhere, even at the big ones. Yep. You put an engineer in front of a cooker. Okay, <laughs> a sophisticated one. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> okay, you don't call it a kitchen, you call it a lab, but I can testify, I can tell you that it's still a kind of a thermomix, if I use a brand, yeah. a kind of a cooker, yeah. and they experiment, they experiment, they experiment. This is the way we develop food right now. So you imagine if you start with the belief that I have that all the solution is available or, uh, in the topic that we face right now, like how do we decrease the carbon footprint of the food system? How do we uh, decrease the amount of fat, the amount of sugar added, right. the amount of um, uh, animal protein? Because yeah. we know we will not feed 10 million people with animal protein. Right. It's, it's impossible. Right. We have already have the data. So the solution will come from nature. Everything is available in nature, except that we are not capable to find the right combination of right. protein coming from nature, of new ingredients coming from nature. And with a virtual twins, what we aim to do is to be capable to, um, through a virtual you know, uh, modeling, to experiment in a much broader scale. Really? And to, yes, of course, and to find the right combination of protein coming from plants, for instance, right. to be able to have as nutritious as accessible and as tasty proposition for the future. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to crack with them, to be the first one to have this virtual twin system mm -hmm. helping us to develop, but not, you know, taking one or that years to test all the combination right. possible, right. but more, you know, to have it, you know, in, 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 in days and weeks. So yeah. like consol consolidating the testing process and development Absolutely. process down to Absolutely. a couple of weeks, maybe, instead Absolutely. of years. Absolutely. And, and wow. making it this even is more scientific, too, it sounds like. Yeah. Yes. And broaden your perspective, because I think there's also a lot of things, a lot of combination that the human brain would not think about. So when you put that in a system, which is just a modeling system, they would test and test. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sure that there is a lot of opportunity opportunities and, and creativity that is in front of us and innovation exactly like it happened in the pharma industry for the last 10 years. Right. Cool. That's right. exactly what happened right. at the pharma right. industry. Right. And those two worlds are merging every single day, pharma yeah. and food as well. All right. Well, thank you, Cecile. Thank you so thank much. You. The CEO of the Bell Group, thanks for joining us. Thanks to the Fusion Group for providing the partnership for our coverage from CGF 2025 live from Amsterdam. We're going to be back later today with more interviews. And until then, Anne. Be careful out there.